the foxhole comes to <laughs> us this week. Dustin Fox is here. Dustin, let's talk a little bit about this Ohio State football team. A lot of people want to see Braxton Miller, a quarterback, but Joe Bowserman seems to have the job. Yeah, I think he does. I mean, you look at the season and how it's progressed throughout the offseason, it seems as he's got the first crack at, at, at Akron coming out. He's, he's a senior. He's a guy who's, who's very experienced as far as, you know, practice time and things of that nature. But I think ultimately you're going to have to make a decision whether you want to go with the, the future talent and the potential in Braxton Miller, or do you want to go with someone you think you, you may trust a little bit more? Well, when you go, I mean, is that all it is on Bowserman, just trust? I mean, there's, I mean, there's a little bit of experience yeah. there. Uh, you know, Luke knows what he's got mm -hmm. with him, but what skills, I mean, we really haven't seen a whole lot of him. What skills does he possess to make you think that he can be a winner for Ohio State? Well, I, I just think the fact that he's, he's 26 years old and he's been around the system for a long time. I mean, he's, he's been in the huddle for a while. He knows the guys very well. But I think to this point in, in the preseason, both players have played extremely well, you know, almost equal, actually, you think about it. So that leads me to believe that I think Braxton Miller is going to get the shot, probably not the first snap against Akron, but maybe the second half, maybe the opener against uh, Toledo. I think by the end of the, you know, the five games where the players are suspended, Braxton Miller, Braxton Miller will be your starting quarterback. All right, you know the transition between high school and college as good as anybody else. Yeah. For Braxton Miller to be successful in his freshman year, if he comes in a replacement role for Joe Bowserman, what does he need to go through mentally? Well, you talk about a position where it's, it's not going to be easy for a true, fr true freshman coming in to take on that position. No, because, I mean, yeah, we're I mean, talking about a position that they make movies about. Point yeah, break. Oh, no, there's no well, question. What did you do? I was the quarterback at Ohio State. Yeah, sure. I mean, it's going to be tough for, for Braxton. The good thing about it is, is he was there in the spring, so he's got a little bit of time under his belt, but still, he's going to be a true freshman. He's going to make a lot of mental errors, I think, throughout the course of uh, the first part of the season. It's going to be tough for him. The question is, can they get through these first five games? Can they sort of take his lumps? Which I think they can. I mean, they're, they're facing a couple MAC teams. They have the big one uh, in Miami. Then they, they face Colorado. So I think that they can get through those games with Braxton at the helms. And then you look at, as they get into the meat of the Big Ten schedule, he may be more comfortable. All right, let's talk about the overall transition from Jim Trestle mm -hmm. to Mike Vrabel. And how do you think that's going in Columbus? And from what I've heard from inside Ohio State, there's not a person inside the Ohio State Athletic Department that is not rooting for Luke Fickle to yeah. get this thing moving. Yeah, Luke, Luke's doing a good job. I think everybody in, involved in the organization is excited about it. And I, I'll tell you who his biggest fan is, is Jim Trestle. You know, I know Jim is extremely excited for Luke to have this opportunity. And everybody's pulling for Ohio State to, to get nine, ten wins this year, and hopefully Luke can continue to have that success to get the job extended. Is it still basic Buckeye football, silver, yeah. silver bullets, get yeah. it done, and then whatever happens with the offense? That's always been the case at Ohio State. The, the silver bullet defense is, has always played well. And Jim Haycock's back as a defensive coordinator. I think the defensive schemes are going to remain the same. they got a lot of holes to fill, I think, in that secondary. But you look at how deep they are up front. The linebackers are going to be solid. Defense is going to play well, and obviously defense wins championships. Yeah, I may have misspoke. Yeah. Uh, Mike Vrabel. Is now with the coach. Yeah, side. Michael Vrabel Mike yeah. is going to be the linebacker. Yeah, and so, I mean, Mike is, uh, it sounds to me like he's a Fred Pugich type just from reading some of the articles and the way he's been yelling at guys at practice. Is that he, true? He has. In fact, he's, he's taken Curtis Grant, who's the true freshman linebacker uh, stud, under his wing, sort of really been, you know, getting in here, his ear hole quite a bit. And, you know, a lot of people are excited by the fact that, that Vrabes is able to transition a lot of his, you know, insight from on the field to being a coach now. All right, so. These first five games are going to be crucial for Ohio State yeah. before they meet up with Nebraska. You've got guys that are ineligible. Mm -hmm. what, do you, what, what is the litmus test for Ohio State now? What makes you say, this is successful? 5-0. and oh. I mean, that's the, there's no doubt about it. I mean, they should win all five of those games. I, I think even you have Devere Posey out, you have Boom Heron out, uh, Mike Adams is out, obviously, and, and, and um, I'm, I'm forgetting the other one right now. But At this point, it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, you but say I mean, Boom Heron's out and you say Devere Posey. Yeah, I mean, that's, it's, that's 80% of your offense. So they're going to have to have some young players step up. But here again, the Silver Bullet defense is what they can rely on for those first five games. All right. He's inside the foxhole normally. Tonight he's <laughs> on the stage. So uh, that'll be uh, what we'll talk about when it comes to Ohio State. <laughs>